bit I'll just share some of my own background and some of the our CCS history or Circle City Sound my course in Indy. Um, our, our mantra is that we, we strive to be a chapter of excellence in everything that we do um, and so basically I've kind of I've kind of whittled that down to five main areas excellence in artistry and so how we what we expect of our members is that they have individual accountability for their art right it's not just um, it's not just we are here to follow the director 100% and we're striving for the approval of the director and the leadership. We want some individual ownership when it comes to the art, right? And of course the, in, the instructors, we, we provide the plans, we give the artistic vision, but it has to be owned by the members, right? We feel that creates better musicians in the end, right? Independent musicianship. Um, we also expect a high level of preparation. And part of that comes with providing the resources to, um, you know, to the members. So, you know, whether it's really highly marked up music or accurate learning tracks. I don't know about you guys. Uh, anyone use learning tracks in here for their choruses or programs, right? Um, have you all experienced, I'm sure, um, the, the awesome thing when the sheet music doesn't match the learning tracks and then you decide, what the heck do we do now, right? Um, providing accurate learning tracks or at least sheet music that's marked up will help them with their level of preparation, right? Um, for our chapter of excellence, we also want excellence in outreach for our chapter. We support uh, our, Harmony our Harmony Explosion Camp, which is our local uh, youth and harmony camp. We support it financially. They, uh, the chapter donates every year to the camp. Um, but they also, uh, most of the chapter comes to the show just to support the kids because they, you know, they're, they're really interested in that kind of outreach and support. Um, we do a Ready, Set, Sing program. Uh, we, we haven't done it in a while, but I know um, like we try to do it once every two or three years where we offer to the community essentially free singing lessons. It kind of lets them be aware, you know, hey, we're here. And basically every chorus rehearsal is a singing lesson. And, you know, and, and we kind of set aside some of our music educators. We're very, uh, very fortunate to have four music educators in our chorus that can that can take aside and do, give private voice lessons on the side. Uh, we're also huge into community events. We do the arts fairs in Indiana. Anyone ever been to the Indiana State Fair? You should really go. It really smells awful and uh, <laughs> for that reason alone, but uh, it's really, really a great time. Sometimes we perform there. Um, just recently, we've been in contact with, with one of the local correctional facilities, um, so we're trying to do outreach in that way. And that was really, that was something really recent within this past year that is kind of pushing our own comfort level a bit. Because um, a lot of our guys aren't really comfortable sometimes in that environment. They don't know what to expect, but we all agreed, you know what, we should jump on board with this together and do outreach in a way that sometimes pushes the boundaries and gets us out of our comfort zone because, you know, if you think about this little diagram here, I'm sure you've seen, you know, the fort of comfort, right? Oh, how about I spell right? Right? And this is where the magic happens, right? That's where all the magic happens. So if we can break that wall and go out into our comfort zone, or out of the comfort zone, and really make the magic happen, that's, that's a really, really great thing to, that we can do. Nursing homes, we visit them often. Um, Excellence and connection. Um, we're interested in chapter membership, right? And sometimes there are some courses that, you know, they'll meet once a month and they, they have people coming from all over and they, you know, it's, it's, not it's just about that high level of art instead of the community, which is not a bad thing, but that's not so much what we're about. You know, if you're going to be there, we want you to be there regularly. You know, we want the connection because one of the best things of Barbershop, in my opinion, is the connection that it brings between the members and the singers of the group. Because um, that's, that's what keeps me coming back every Monday. Um, and then, you know, when it comes to performances for our audience, you know, we, we try to do a balance of entertainment and education, right? Things that are entertaining and things that they're going to love, but also kind of, you know, showing them new styles, showing them new songs, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Um, we want excellence in education. We've, we've really made sure that we're focusing on the philosophy of 
this place is a place to learn in our rehearsals. Um, you know, where some, sometimes we get, it was funny when we first started, we started this initiative called CCS University, where the first part of rehearsal, we would schedule um, basically a different instructor every, um, every week where they would teach like a really intense concept for that hour. And then the rest of the rehearsal would, would kind of keep that focus, but working on a repertoire kind of through that lens. Um, and it really helped to change the guy's mindset because a lot of our guys just wanted to come to sing. We're just here to sing. We just want to sing. And it's like, well, part of the joy of singing is singing well. Part of the joy of singing is learning and growing together. Um, and so we've changed that, that culture in our own chorus. Um, so we, we try to do our best to provide high-quality resources. Um, we've instilled a, you know... Uh, a drive to have self-motivation to strive for excellence all the time in every area and providing opportunities for growth and leadership. So, and then finally, excellence in our attitude, a supportive family atmosphere, enthusiasm for learning and growing, and we're super passionate about our endeavors and our mission. So, um, I think it's important to talk about the difference between efficiency and effectiveness. Um, I think efficiency is doing things right and effectiveness is doing the right things. And you need to have a combination of both, obviously, when you're planning for your own rehearsals, right? Uh, performing or functioning in the best possible manner with the least waste of time and effort for efficiency, right? Or the shortest possible route to success. Um, and then effectiveness, performing or functioning in a way that will get you to the best possible desired outcome, right? Arriving at the correct result. <laughs> I think characteristics of efficient rehearsals uh, include pacing. Um, pacing is specifically planned in rehearsal. If you're not, um, if you're not varying up the pace, um, it's going to be easy to lose focus. It's going to be easy to um, get the guys not to be fully engaged all the time. So you know, there's fast and medium and slow pacing. But like, for example, fast pacing being introducing a new piece um, and just kind of singing through it just the first time. Um, and not really getting into the nitty gritty, but just singing and reminding, gentle reminders about good singing, all that stuff. Um, in terms of medium pacing, you know, you might get it a little bit more detail oriented, but really, you know, you might be communicating message here. You might be talking about, you know, an overarching musical plan, things like that. Um, and then the slow, the really, really detail work, right? Block and tackle. Um, for any football people out there, I'm not a football person, but I've heard that block and tackle is is like slow pacing of rehearsal. So I have, I have no idea what a block and tackle is, but it's when, in music, it's when you focus on one chord. Uh, for those who are in the general session, we blocked and tackled those tough passages and da 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 da, bold, da 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 da, right? I've seen some of this where in the beginning of the rehearsal, uh, you start off really fast paced with your warm ups, your exercises, some physical things. Then as you go, you know, then you start to get more detail-oriented and everything. Um, and then as, as it gets later and later and as, they're get, as your singers are getting tired, it's good to ramp the pace back up for that fast pacing. Um, if you are, let's say, in uh, high school, sometimes you want at least one middle, right? You want a, another fast-paced activity in there. If you teach middle school, you're going to want something like this, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I know, I did, st <laughs> middle school is, <laughs> okay, um, you know, but again, it all depends on your singers and, and obviously being really cognizant of what your singers need at the time. When it comes to efficient rehearsals, I think quality matters more than quantity, right? How many of us have tried to squeeze in as many songs? We've got a big performance coming up. We've got to get in every song, so let's just do two-minute runs of everything, and let's take the tempos faster so we can just get through the notes. Uh, quantity does not mean quality, right? Um, it's more important to make sure that you're planning out your rehearsals very specifically so that you can achieve quality instruction that will be retained Right? Isn't that one of the issues too? Just, you know, we feel like we do all this good work and then we don't reinforce it later, right? Um, 
Educators, you'll know what I'm talking about when I talk to bell-to-bell -bell instruction, right? Um, as soon as that, as soon as the, you know, downbeat on seven, and then we're out by 9.45 or whatever that may be, but no time is wasted. Um, and the only thing I'll say, it's, I think it's a great philosophy, but it has to be meaningful, right? A lot of educators, especially beginning educators, will fall into the trap of just creating busy work for the sake of busy work, so that way everything is full. Don't do that. You know, it, it has to be very meaningful and very specifically planned. Um, I don't know about you guys. Uh, we, for our singers in CCS, I think breaks are a good thing to recharge. I, I think it's the balance, though, of recharging versus losing focus. If the break is too long, if it turns into a 20 to 30 minute break, they're not going to get back on the risers for another 10 minutes after that. And then you've wasted almost 45 minutes. Um, but, you know, just enough to get off the risers because we used to have, we used to have no breaks. Um, we used to just rehearse for three hours on Monday night. Um, and we, one of the complaints that we had as a leadership was like, we just had people on and off the risers constantly. They would just be walking down, go get a drink, all this stuff. And so, you know what? Let's plan a specific break so that way the time we do have together is together 100%. And then that just kind of creates the emergency clause, you know, only leave it if it's an emergency. And that kind of creates more focus for us. So that worked. Um, also, when we have guest nights, we do create just one break that's a little bit longer, like in the middle. So that way, you know, for 15 minutes, if it's a guest night, reach out to some guests, you know, chat with them, get to know them a little bit. Uh, we usually bring food and all that jazz. So um, effective rehearsals, I think it comes down to instructional technique, right, um, in terms of doing the right things. Um, and because you all know, you all know about this already because you're here, you're always seeking new opportunities for growth and learning, which is key. Um, but I think two things that are huge that I, I think a lot of educators and a lot of directors fall into is there's just not enough singing in rehearsal. Um, I love to talk a lot instead of involve and engage, right? Um, and so often, isn't, isn't nonverbal communication so much more effective than verbal? Um, you know, uh, I, when I don't talk and I just, and see, just by not talking, I already got 50% of you who were writing, you stopped and looked up. Simply, simply with that, right? And when I do that, I got, my guys are eating out of the palm of my hand, right? Uh, because they, if they look away, they're going to miss something, right? And so it's that idea that do more singing, do more instruction and less talking because, especially as a younger educator, it's easy to want to go, well, ed educator, director, period, sometimes you want to show your singers that you know what you're talking about, right? You want to show that I am competent, I can help lead, I can. Don't tell me how much you can do it, just do it. So instead of saying, guys, will you sing that more musically, you know, down our way, both night and day. Guys, sing that more musically. Down our way. And instead of, guys, try it like this. Down our way, both night and day. And then they can respond with that. Okay? You're giving them some specific tools to say, here's what I mean when I say sing musically, right? Choosing the correct pacing for certain pieces directly affects effectiveness, right? Um, where are the songs in their development? So a new song, you probably, for me, I think introducing a new song, it's important to keep it fast paced in the beginning. So that way it's exciting and it's new and then you can break it down later. I wouldn't necessarily break it down the first time we ever listen to it. Um, what you do and how you do it are determined by where your vision's going, why you want to go there. I think there's the artistic development of planning, and I think there's the, lo the logistical side, right? So in terms of artistic development, there's repertoire mapping, right? Deciding what songs you're going to sing for shows, especially if your group uh, performs often throughout the year. Sometimes, I know in school, we have essentially four concert seasons, right? We have the fall concert season, winter concert season, um, 
midwinter and spring, right? All of that kind of stuff. And so I will map out before we even get to school in August each I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay, this choir is going to sing this for fall. Just having all the concert programs already made up, essentially, and then having minor tweaks after that. Instructional planning, it's important to know what your process is. For beginning instructors and directors, it's really important to map it out specifically, but once you get it, but process is huge. It's not, because how many of you have had a teacher that you have, that you know is so smart and gets it, but they haven't been able to communicate it with you? Right? I think we've all experienced those. Hopefully you're not experiencing that right now. Um, but it's, it's, it's all about the process. It's all about involving, right? It's the cliche, you know, tell me and I forget. Um, you know, it, involve me and I like learn, right? It's that kind of thing. I don't, re there is one in between that I forgot. Who cares, right? Um, <laughs> concert program, think about the pacing of selections, variety of repertoire, selecting appropriate repertoire for your ensemble. Um, you know, that's all on the artistic side. And then on the logistical side, you've got, I think it's important to start with long term. What's the goal? What's the vision? And for us, our vision is chapter of excellence, all that stuff we talked about in the beginning. Um, so I'll have a yearly overview for the guys to look at. I'll have a concert overview. So the yearly overview will literally be, it's a huge spreadsheet of the entire, um, you know, six months or basically the season that we're on, it will have all of the rehearsals, what pieces we're working on, who's working on what, everything. I'll show you that in just a second. Concert overview, what songs we're singing, kind of what's the order, MCs, blah, blah. And then in terms of short-term planning, that's when we get to the detailed oriented. And I, I like to go minute by minute, measure by measure. Um, just because, again, I, it's better to have a plan to deviate from as opposed to, yeah, let's just work on that song in this time. I think that'll be good. You know, that's, that, could, that could be, you know, not to say it couldn't be effective, but is it the most efficient use of your time? Are you planning for an efficient rehearsal, right? Um, usually one to three weeks ahead, so that way, if you have a rehearsal and then you know, okay, that didn't go quite as well as I wanted it to, I need to reflect and say, next week needs to be a little bit different, right? Uh, repertoire mapping, how much time for each song, and then you categorize the difficulty. Um, I think I had figured it out. It was, let's see, we have, you know, three hours, right, in, in a rehearsal. And then you times that by, you know, 12 rehearsals, okay? And then you divide however, that, that number by however many songs you have left. And that's kind of how much time you have for each song. And then for the easy ones, you maybe take a third of the time away and add it to the harder songs kind of thing. But knowing how much time you want to spend is, is important. had a lot of, of new songs uh, to be memorized and so we sent this schedule out just to be really clear with the expectations. Um, you know songs we had memorized was all of our contest stuff plus keep the whole world singing obviously. Um, and then each week they had a different song they had to make sure that was um, memorized. You know and again we just had to follow up and make sure that they were following that. We meet annually and then we meet quarterly so we have a big meeting annually like in December and then we have one at each quarter just to kind of talk about goals and where we're going and everything. Um, we also meet at the end of every rehearsal for 15 minutes just to debrief and go what worked today, what didn't work today. Um, for us, if there's a lot of people where we say we expect you to be memorized here and they're only memorized to here, um, then we just, we have to, we have to remodify. You know, we have to say, okay, next week's going to be sectionals um, and everything. And it's, again, it's a balance. It's how much was it poor planning on our part, how much of it was not enough accountability on their part. And that might be a conversation that we have. If it's an individual that this happens to over and over again, we might have an, an individual conversation with that individual and say, you know, hey, we're, we're really expecting you to be here and you're showing up here every time. How can we help? Is there some way that we can assist you? Because a lot of times when they're not prepared, it's either, you know, obviously they've got stuff going on or they haven't been to rehearsal or, um, the other thing is there's something that we're doing as leadership that's not adequately preparing them. Um, and just trying to be aware of that and trying to, you know, because honestly, I, I think some of these, I try to plan for at least two sectionals per song, but some don't need it. And so I can take away a sectional from one and go, okay, this one's going to be fine. Let's do this one instead. From a lot of mistakes, learning from a lot of our own mistakes, planning, 
um, we're able to modify and try to think ahead about, okay, I remember we really struggled with this last time. How are we going to plan differently next time? school, for example, we would deal with something very similar. And so if I had one really strong like uh, girl or something, I would say, you know, hey, will you go ahead and take the ladies and work with them on their part? And then I would take the guys and then we could at least divide and conquer in that way. How about, uh, can I get an A flat? A flat from anybody? Let's sing Heart of My Heart. And I only want to hear the leads on the words. I want everyone else to sing ooh, please, but on your parts. Here we go. And... Good. Leads, do me a favor. Um, if you were a solo singer on the, on the Voice or on American Idol, how might you treat that differently artistically? Okay, let's try that again. And. Heart of my heart. Good. Already a lot better confidence. Can I get more lift leads? And. Heart of my heart, I love you. Good. Everyone sing now. And. that might be another instructional technique that you can use where you still keep everyone engaged but focus on one group. And you can almost do mini sectionals, right? And so what I might have done then is say, bases, let's only hear you on words, everyone else on do, or something like that. And again, you don't want to do that the whole, the whole period, obviously. Um, but even say, taking aside, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and saying, we're going we're gonna to do mini sectionals now where you're still going to be singing your parts and do's, but I'm going to go ahead and focus on this section. And sometimes the oohs will keep them supported, but you can really hear the whatever section you're working with clearly. Sometimes that helps. We do a treble clef sectional or a bass clef sectional. Um, and then uh, initially, when, when we first started doing those, I would, I would take some time to make sure that I'm planning and doing all my stuff right. And, but then I was like, you know, we, I need to make sure that I'm with one of the groups at all times. And so I would do that. I'd take half the sectional time with them, half the sectional time with them. It's a, such an effective way to make, to make a big impact. And like you said, quality instead of quantity. That's huge. Um, my email is up here. Um, I'm happy to send you any of these or share these. Thank you so much for your time. Feel free to email or contact me for any other questions you have. So thank you.